Hello everyone, today we're gonna be talking about Starship Rubicon. What is the Starship Rubicon? You might wonder, you're gonna see a little background right here. I'm gonna have some gameplay go through as I explain that certain um features and things you could expect from the game. Now a little short description of the game, it's a lot like FTL and asteroids busted into one game. So you remember asteroids, you're going through controlling a little ship. You can often control with uh much ease, a lot more ease than asteroids. Asteroids had the the four directions and angles you can go out, but with this you do control your ship with the rice 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 mouse button, the right mouse button, and fire with the left. It's a pretty interesting game. Now, when I say FTL, it has a lot of FTL aspects. A lot of the things you'll see is uh, different types of ships, different weapons, and upgrades that you can do throughout the game, which is a lot of uh. Uh, quite like FTL, FTL has a lot of different uh, zones and, and materials you can find, like money to upgrade your ship or repair your ship. A uh, little thing different from FTL to Starship Rubicron is you can repair your ship after every level if you got enough coins, which I think is often uh, pretty nice as you can take a lot of damage very easily if your shields are down. Now. There are a different ships, um, there are many different weapons for each ship, and there's many different levels you can go through the entire thing. Uh, there's going to be two ships I'm going to be showing in this video. One of them is a laser ship, which is uh, pretty nice. It actually is a little bit difficult to actually hit people because you do have to get much closer than you normally would. And what's rather nice about this, this ship is Blink. Um, it's the only ship that has blink other than uh, certain enemies and I didn't actually quite realize what its uh, spacebar special was until I uh, later into the game and it was rather nice it actually allows you to dodge things much easier and I I really like that kind of little feature um, the other ship I played through is a flamethrower ship now when you think about it you know flamethrowers really shouldn't work in space but this is a game and we want a flamethrower okay that's what we want. We want to burn ships to death. Now that's an interesting one because that spacebar ability is actually a laser, which I like quite a lot. It usually killed everything in very minimal time, and you can wipe it across the screen, which allowed it to wipe out a lot of enemies at once. So there's a lot of different ships with come with many different weapons, and they all have their individual stats of armor and shield and speed. Which comes into a lot of nice things as, you know, you can find a ship that more fits your playstyle or a ship that just is, each ship is just always a little bit different and I really like that about the game, it brings in a lot of FTL things because there were many different ships in FTL, there were, I don't know, the 7 plus ships at least, I, I didn't play much of an advanced edition of FTL so I know there was a lot more now than there was in the original. Uh, one of the nice things that stands this out from a uh, feature that is not in FTL and it is a kind of a standalone in its own um, features is allies. Allies are uh, people you can come across in certain zones. Um, it would be very obvious when there is one as there will be a green ship. When you look into the next area there will be a dot. It is a distress ship. Uh, when you go over there and you jump start its engines, um, soon after you will uh, have... Uh, aliens or enemies come to destroy you both as they normally would come to destroy you if you actually protect it through the entirety of that level you acquire an ally in which you can use every couple zones every time you use it it does depending on how good it is I'm not sure if they're all the same they're usually the ones that I've had are three to four days or when they're tired before they can get back up and help you in a zone one of the things I like about each zone, when we, let's go into the zones part of this, is there is a boss at the end of every zone, which is rather nice. It really makes you give a, give a sense of completion, which I really like, of a zone, you know, I, I beat this boss, etc. and things like that, which is really nice. I do like uh, the bosses that you can come across. And the second zone boss got me pretty good, and the first one got, almost got me. For a while, I didn't know that there was a shield in the front of it and I was just like throwing my flamethrower at it and literally nothing was happening. I was very confused. Then I realized that the, you had to attack the sides of it to actually deal the true damage. Uh, the, you know, there is shipbuilding aspects. Um, there I did mention that uh, you do have the things that you can build and other weapons. Now you cannot change your weapons as far as I know. 
but I know you can change the range, damage, and many other assortments of the weapon, which I really like. You can add things that give you more damage or make your flame, like your flamethrowers go farther than they normally would, but there is a limited amount of space in your ship. You have to find what would fit in it most because there's blocks and certain blocks are certain weapons and certain weapons can only attach to certain things, uh, power blocks or a special code. So sometimes you have to rotate things to fit into your ship the way you really want it to so you can get every little bit out of your ship and make it a hulking monstrosity. Now, this isn't a definition of a true roguelike game, which, you know, isn't bad. It's not a bad thing. If you played on a harder difficulty, maybe there isn't a restart, but you could just not restart. If you've gotten far enough in the game, which about on the second zone, I was able to do it once, and it cost 500 or 500 coins or, or crystals to restart the game, but restart it to the, it's a soft, not a full restart, it's the, the level right before you died, which is kind of nice, but it does take away from the aspect of it is not a true roguelike, but it's perfectly fine. It's much more catered to the uh, casual player because in FTL, if you die, you start from the beginning, you gotta work your way back up, and in this one, you know, it's a little bit more forgiving. You can come back into the game, which is often nice. Uh, shops can allow you to buy parts as well. You can find parts for your ship, actually, in uh, battles and the shop, which is really nice, and there's a whole assortment of enemies. You can see it through the entire video of the gameplay going in the back, there is many different, you know, cages you can run into, or uh, ones that shoot missiles, or one that just shoots normal shots. There are ones who shoot uh, beams, and I don't believe I've ran into any that shoot any flamethrowers. That'd be a little crazy, um, but I mean, it's, I wouldn't be surprised if one eventually had one. But anyways, that's about all I have to say about Starship Review Count and the features that I have experienced through the amount I have played through the game, and I could say it's a, it's a game I recommend. I will have um, DDs in the description where you can get this game, and where you can contact the developer if you want to, you know, say, if you have any advice, or if there's forums on it that they can use, or any, uh, I will also link his Twitter if you want to say, hey, I got your game. I'm sure he would really appreciate that. Indie developers need all the love they need. So, this is Starship Rubricon. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Sergeant Kuna signing out.